Hey everyone, it's Todd the Cybertruck Truck Guy and today we're going to talk about this. Your quarter jar. Or maybe you have a quarter drawer. Whatever it is, we're going to talk about how you're going to be able to use your Cybertruck to take vacations for about the same amount of money as it takes to fill up one of these quarter jars. We're going to be talking about the five specific reasons the Cybertruck has no peers when it comes to taking low cost, awesome vacations. And then I'm gonna walk you through an actual trip that I would take and how I would plan it out using the Cybertruck and just why it would be so advantageous to take amazing vacations for just a few hundred bucks. So let's get into it. So first I'm gonna cover the five things that make the Cybertruck absolutely unique when it comes to letting you take low cost vacations. Point number one, the fully enclosed bed with environmental controls. Now, we don't know exactly what Elon Musk meant when he said the bed will have environmental controls, but let's assume that it's gonna be full environmental controls. The fact that from the factory floor, you have a bed with a covering on it that is watertight or tight enough for camping purposes, and that actually has the ability to heat and cool it with no additional cost except for what it takes from the batteries is the, um, the most amazing advantage when it comes to camping with this vehicle because it lets you go into places with extreme weather conditions and basically still camp for free or very low cost. Point number two, you're gonna be able to use regular household appliances to store and prepare food. This is a huge deal. When you're camping, you get really sick really fast eating things like dehydrated food or MREs. You want real food. And the way you get real food is you have real household appliances to make the food. Point number three, you're gonna have the ability to actually level the Cybertruck regardless of the terrain that you're on. This is massive because it opens up all kinds of remote and free camping areas that are in rugged places like national forests and state parks that are free, but maybe the the ground isn't so good. So the fact that the air suspension will actually let you level it up so you can sleep well is another amazing advantage. Point number four, the Cybertruck will have 3,500 pounds of payload capacity. I cannot overemphasize this enough. A regular half ton pickup truck usually has somewhere around 2,000 pounds. Most off-road capable vehicles tend to have lower than that, 1,500, 16, 1,400 pounds. The Cybertruck with 3,500 pounds will give you a tremendous ability not only to add gear, but to also use hitch carriers. And I'll talk about that a little bit more, but these are slide-in carriers that slide into your towing hitch, and you can put pretty heavy things on there like motorcycles or bicycles or kayaks, other things, so you can free up the bed space and still bring a massive amount of stuff along with you without carrying a trailer. Point number five, the thing that makes all of this work is the fact that the Cybertruck is gonna be an exceptionally capable, exceptionally safe, and exceptionally fun off-road vehicle. Now, maybe you've never done much off-road, but what I can tell you is that off-road riding and touring is addictive, and you have the ability to go places and see things that most people never will. You can go places campers can't go, people with trailers can't go, and most people with anything except like Jeeps or high clearance pickup trucks can go. This gives you the access to go into places that are remote and beautiful. It also gives you, the Cybertruck will also give you the ability when you're out in more flat gravel areas to hit that accelerator and fly. And let me tell you, going fast off-road is a blast. The Cybertruck is like bringing along your own amusement park with you wherever you go. If you're anywhere that has off-road areas, it's like you have a little mini amusement park along with you on the ride. Okay, so those are the five reasons I think the Cybertruck will let you take amazing, cheap vacations. Vacations that cost about the same as what you can get in one of these quarter jars. Yeah, that's a big jar, isn't it? I know, this is my son's. I use a drawer, so 
it's illustrative. So before we get into actually showing you how I would plan a vacation, and again, I'm constrained by the geography I live in, where I live, Kansas City, and where I like to go most, which is out to Colorado. But just about anywhere you live, there are amazing natural areas within five to 10 hours, almost anywhere in the US or Canada, certainly Australia, most places that are watching this video. So consideration number one is that you should think about your trip, combining camping in regular campgrounds and doing wild camping. Now in the States, there is a lot of land, especially in the Western US where the Rockies are, where you're allowed to camp for free. The problem with that is that there's no facilities. There's no running water. There's no electricity. As somebody that's done my fair share of wild camping and camping in campgrounds, there's pros and cons to each. But the point is that you want to use those strategically so that when you're camping in a campground and you'll want to do that from time to time for convenience or also you're going to want a nice hot shower, which you can't get when you're wild camping unless you have a lot of extra gear. The idea is you're going to be able to charge for free overnight and then go out from, from there. So you see in my trip plan, I've kind of shown you how I would organize it using campgrounds and wild camping. Point number two, you really should bring along some regular household appliances. And there's three in particular I would recommend. The first is a mini fridge. The second is a hot plate. And the third is a toaster oven. And I'll explain why in a little bit, but do your own thing your own way. But you want the tools available to let you prep food in a way that is high quality. Yes, you could bring a microwave along and there are times you will just want to use a microwave and that's always an option. But if you have the ability to actually make good food while you're out there in the backcountry, you're going to be, you're going to enjoy it a lot more and it's going to cost you a lot less. And the third consideration is use your cargo capacity. It will take time to get your rig set up the way you want. But one thing is make sure that you're thinking about what you can carry on the hitch. So that's where you can mount things like bike carriers, a kayak carrier, a motorcycle or dirt bike carrier. There's things you can put on the hitch that let you fill up the bed and still carry something on the back end of the hitch. And because of how much capacity the Cybertruck has, you're gonna be able to carry a lot of weight on that hitch because of that 3,500 pounds of carrying capacity. Okay, so let's jump in and actually look at a trip. Okay, so we're gonna actually get into the trip part here. So what I'm showing you here is, again, if you decide to get a cyber truck and decide you want to try any of this stuff i would strongly recommend that you get a subscription to trails off-road i think it's like 25 bucks a year it's very affordable and it gives you all kinds of information on great places to go um, off-road riding and it does it, it these are color coded by their degree of difficulty so that you can start out on easy stuff and then you can go up from there but why is this uh, part of Colorado so attractive to me? Well, the first thing is that inside of the national parks, and unfortunately, not national parks, national forests, there, which are abundant all through this whole area, you can camp for free. You find a little place that's already been camped in, you pull over, you can camp there for free. The second thing is, as you can see, these are full of places to go, off-roading and exploring. Now, the nice thing about this area, and this is why I'm thinking about kind of this area for the meetup, here's your charger network. So there's one in Colorado Springs, there's one in Salida or Salida, there's one in Aspen, there's one in Silverthorne, one in Idaho Springs, and obviously there's quite a few up in the Denver area. So this is going to be a great place if you're going into the Rockies. This is going to be a great area because you can off-road sort of back and forth between these and end up at a supercharger where you can where you can get charged up. So that's why in my fictitious vacation, I'm going to be spending it in this area. Here are the things I'd recommend. Now, um, a mini fridge. 
if you want to get like a 12 volt off-road refrigerator, their good ones range from like 600 to a thousand bucks. But because the Cybertruck has household outlets, you can just get a $70 mini fridge from Walmart. You'll be able to have cold beer and, you know, steak or whatever, get it in the morning or the day before, throw it in the fridge and have that. So basically I say, spend a little bit of money on this stuff because you'll save money when you travel because you'll be less inclined to eat out. If you can eat well, you're not going to be as tempted to want to go eat out at a restaurant. So I would recommend a big toaster oven, something you can put a pizza in if you want, but you can also bake in. Now, maybe you're not much of a cook, but you can do so much more when you can actually bake something. And then a hot plate. You'll notice I don't have a microwave. I've not found a microwave is what I miss when I'm out and about. I've found that what I miss is a fridge and an oven. Um, and in exchange for a hot plate, you can always cook over a fire, but hot plate is 30 bucks. So, you know, you're talking about $300, $230 here. Obviously it's up to you, but this is what I would go with in my cyber truck. So here is my five day trip. So, uh, a pound of quarters is $20. So remember I kind of oh, showed this. Now this is a big quarter jar, but I found out that a pound of quarters is equal to about $20. This is 13.8 pounds. So that's $276. Is it arbitrary? Of course it's arbitrary. I'm trying to make a point here, which is most of us have spare change stuff. We throw our spare change into and it adds up after a little bit. The fact that in a cyber truck you can I think take a legit vacation for $300 five day vacation that is remarkable to me so let me walk through the math here so first day I'm going to be driving from Kansas City to Colorado Springs so let's so if you use a better route planner that's um, they also have an app but you can see here's my trip from you know the more irritating thing is they don't have a plus and minus, so I have to actually like use my touchpad. Um, so here are the superchargers that I'd have to stop at going from Kansas City to Colorado Springs. And my total cost would be, I'd be spending about 31 bucks to get to Colorado Springs. And then my first night I'm gonna spend in a campground. And the reason is, again, you're driving all day. You're not going to want to try and find a remote camp and put up camp and cook your dinner and all that other stuff. You're just it's convenient to go to a campground. But remember, the advantage to the Cybertruck is why you park and you plug in. You're going to wake up in the morning with a full charge or with a substantial charge. You know, I it depends, I guess, how long you're there for. But assuming you're there for 12 to 14 hours, you're going to be fully charged. So your, your camp fee is going to cover that. So then I'm going to drive overland to Salida. So I'm going to go from Colorado Springs over to Salida here. And I'm saying that because I know that there's a bunch along this road here. There's all kinds of wild camping places, super easy to find, no problem. So you're going to this trip only takes a couple hours, so you're going to have plenty of time to mess around, do some off-road driving, but then find a place that you want to camp. So every day I budgeted $25. So I, from, I'm from i doing this as a single person. So add an additional $25 per adult and maybe $10 or $15 per kit. I'm going to recharge there. Then I'm going to get my daily groceries or maybe I already have them. Then I'm going to go, I'm going to go out off-roading. And I'm going to camp overnight in a wild camp spot. And um, in fact, I'm going to hopefully I'm going to find some pictures of uh, an example of some wild camping spots. But they're just everywhere. Once you get out there, you don't. I wondered when I first did this, are you going to have a hard time finding a spot? No, you will not have a hard time finding a spot. When I out last year, we went and we wild camped real close, like an hour away from Colorado Springs. And it was on the 4th of July. And of all the wild camping spots we discovered, I mean, there were everywhere. 
only a third of them, if that, were occupied. And there was more if we had gone looking on the side. We would have found more. Here, I'll just show you where we were. So this road right here, this is a super popular road that goes like from almost to Denver. Rampart Range Road. Okay. On this road, right on the road itself, there's zillions of spots. But then every one of these, and this map does not show all the lateral roads going off the side of it. There are more wild camping spots. And in the Cybertruck, if you're not carrying a trailer, you can go to any of them. The most gnarliest, the most remote, the craziest, you can go there and you can camp. Are at our this is our second campsite and um, so this is on a spur of so basically out over there is the main road going through the National Forest there's a spur that juts off this way and we found this while we were out riding kind of with the with the um, Tacoma we were off-road doing some off-roading stuff and uh, what's amazing is it's free. So pretty amazing. Kind of, we just got everything moved over from our campsite, so it's a little messy. But here's our kitchen area. We're having uh, euros. There's a euro meat. Uh, these are some beans, Indian doll beans, and then we got macaroni and cheese. So, anyway, this is our setup. Down here we got our big bat wing tarp. And, uh, it's epic. Yeah, pretty, pretty cool. So then for, a, uh, so for that day, all the next day, so at some point the next day, you're going to have to go into the Poncha Springs supercharger and charge up. And then for a big chunk of the following day, even though I'm going back to Colorado Springs, so it seems like, um, yeah, I'm, I'm only wild camping two nights, but I'm really getting the best part of three days to go exploring, hiking, boating, uh, motorcycling, mountain biking, any of that stuff you want to do. And because we're going to go back to Colorado Springs and stay in a campground on the fourth night, you can be doing stuff all day long. And then once you get, it starts getting close to dark, you can drive to Colorado Springs, go to your campground and then charge overnight. And then head back, back to Kansas City. You're fully charged again from the campground. So your total cost for charging, groceries, and can and two nights staying two nights at a campground at fifty dollars a night. Your total cost is three hundred eleven dollars. So remember, I said quarter jar is two seventy six. I have I have created a trip. That will be epically fun for $311 and it'll cost you whatever, another hundred bucks per person that goes with you. So if your significant other goes with you, it's another, you know, be another hundred bucks, give or take. So this is just for fun. I planned out a seven day one. I'm not going to go through the whole itinerary, but for seven days, $450. The When I went on vacation with my family, last year and granted there was like seven of us but i felt really good to get through spending something like three to four thousand dollars because there was some hotels mixed in there there was um a lot more eating at restaurants because once we got camp all all set up i could make food i couldn't make it out of the back of our trucks very easy they were so packed full of gear but the advantage of the Cybertruck is it's got so much more 
carrying capacity that, and I can use the hitch, that I can easily be able to prep food from the Cybertruck, from the back of the Cybertruck, uh, depending on how you organize it. But I just think it's going to be amazing. And the off-roading with the Cybertruck is going to be so much fun because it's quick, it's going to be nimble, it's going to be relatively safe, even if you hit something like I did. I tore off my mirror last year with my Tacoma, which sucked. And you're and it, it kind of ruins it when you damage something. The Cybertruck is going to be very difficult to damage. It won't happen accidentally. You'll be doing something very aggressive if you damage the Cybertruck. So as long as you're careful, you're you're not going to scrape it. You're not going to rip off mirrors. You're not going to, because there aren't mirrors. The design of the Cybertruck is so that it's super safe, it's super fun, and it's going to be super cheap to take amazing, incredible vacations and explore the amazing country that most of us live in. Most of us that watch this video either live in the US, uh, Canada, or Australia. And all three of those places, the Cybertruck is going to have immense value as a very affordable off-road adventure vehicle to, um, to go exploring and discovering and enjoying the natural world around us. Anyway, that's it for this video. Um, live stream tomorrow. Uh, again, don't know what we'll talk about, but we'll talk about something uh, tomorrow night, Thursday. Thursday night's 8 o'clock, standard time. And uh, like, subscribe, blah, 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 all that other stuff. All right, that's it. Catch you next time.